The freeze dryer is completely defrosted from the batch of rice and chili that was in there last. Um, in fact, it's been overnight because I was too lazy to get down here and get things in early in the morning. Here's the water from that last batch, so more than three quarters of a gallon uh, from the rice and chili. Okay, now we'll get it set up for the next batches. So for these next few batches, I'm going to try to uh, push on cleaning out the freezer, the one shelf that has all my sister's stuff, and try to get that through here. Some of it has been waiting for most of the 50 batch series and still waiting. So it's time to really get those pushed through and see how fast we can get them done. I will probably show less video of some of these because I didn't make it, so I can't show making it. Uh, I'm not going to bag some of it, so wouldn't have that to show. And it's going to be some repetitive stuff. So I'll just kind of push them through real quick, maybe combine a bunch of them in videos, and I'll try to add some rehydrating of some of our stuff that is either similar or just in a little separate video. So we'll get this set and get it cooling and get in, go get stuff to put in there. So, and get the thermometer underneath. And I don't really need to use the little grabber thing and, and wipe anything out because it's been, it's been probably 18 hours since it was running. So the fan's been blowing on it all that time. And I highly recommend that if you use the defrost function, that unless you've got another batch ready to go immediately afterwards, I recommend opening the door, putting a fan in the door and really drying it out. It will help dry out all the components. In fact, the air pushing through will even uh, dry out the drain tube area. Uh, otherwise, you're going to end up with m moist, m warm space in there that's going to be conducive to growing things that you probably don't want to grow in your freeze dryer. Okay, so going to get everything set. Just going to make sure that the seal is nice and clean. And then I'll get the our plastic shield in place. The plastic shield that I use is just a piece of clear acrylic that I cut to fit this opening. And when I say I fit this opening, I mean specifically this opening facing this direction. The barrel on ours is not exactly round. It's off by three or four millimeters, maybe an eighth of an inch or something out of round. So if I try to put this in a different orientation, it won't fit. So we have a little arrow at the top pointing to the top middle spot. And so when we put it in that way, it's a great fit. And also, once there's a vacuum, this would serve very little purpose, I think. But when I'm cooling it and it's full of regular air pressure on both sides, then it does a pretty decent job on keeping the door from getting cold. So it doesn't freeze near as much. Okay, so I'm going to make sure that there's a seal ring all the way around there. And I'm using a pallet knife and just giving a little twist in the gap between the back of the seal and the machine itself. And just giving it just a slight twist and that pushes that seal until I get a nice firm ring. So with the drain valve closed, I'll start the machine. Our machine is from 2017 and I'm still using the original firmware that came with it. Been very happy with it. Don't, I didn't want to change it at all. So I run all of my cycles on customize, start custom, and continue. The display on the machine says that it's about 65 degrees and the thermometer underneath shows a little higher than 65, closer to 70 degrees. Though I don't know which one's more correct. And I don't really care. It gives me a ballpark within a few degrees. Now, I'm not going to put the frozen food in there until the machine is similar temperature of the frozen food. Our freezers are between 0 and 5 degrees, or negative 5 and positive 5 degrees, so around 0. But by the time I get it on the trays, get a thermometer in there, and get it in the here, it's usually up to about 10 degrees. So I want to make sure that the freeze dryer is down to about 10 degrees before I put the food in. Uh, probably doesn't matter as long as it's down below 20 and dropping. The food probably won't thaw out. 
but I don't want the food to thaw out, so I'm going to make sure it's cold before I put the food in there. Okay, as soon as it's cold enough, we'll get the food out of the freezer and get it in here and find out how many batches worth are in there. So don't go away, we'll be back in just a minute. The freeze dryer is cold now, so we're going to get things out of the freezer. Um, we're going to just start pulling stuff off of my sister's shelf and see how much we can get in there and how fast we can get through all that. See if we can take it out of there and freeze dry it faster than she's putting more in there. That could be a challenge. Okay, so let's find out what we've got. So this whole shelf is stuff waiting to be done and there's some more down below and up above. I'm going to start with a couple of these corrugated plastic pieces to insulate the um, rolling cart from the frozen trays. I've decided I'm going to try to get rid of or get processed. Uh, they've got some ham that's kind of overcooked ham pieces. I'm going to try to get as much of that as I can onto trays and get those taken care of. Okay, tiny ham pieces, and these are in one cup increments. So if I need more, I'll come back and get these. All right, and what is it? Oh, spaghetti sauce here with hamburger. So it looks like there's a whole load worth of that in there and chicken pieces. So I think we'll start with ham and then see what will fit in there and then add more things. Tray one. I don't know how these were put in there. I just know that ham, ham pieces. Well, I'm going to try to just load these pretty heavily and I guess I don't need it on here while I'm loading it. So I'm going to set it on here to keep it a little bit insulated. And okay, these are some of the slices. And I'm not going to, I'm going to leave them fairly tall, I think. So I think gloves would have been a good plan for these because these suckers are cold. But I didn't know how they were put in there. I didn't know if they could just be thrown on there. I think that's going to be as much as I can get on there. You've seen me weighing the trays and writing the weights down a lot. It's totally not necessary if you don't want to. Um, this will pretty much soak up the water that it needs when it goes to be rehydrated. You don't need to weigh out the water and put it in there. So I'm tracking this because people ask how much water did it lose? How much did it weigh before? How much did it weigh afterwards? It's not required. When my sister does her own, she doesn't weigh any of it except the dry check. She'll weigh it and then uh, check it after a couple hours to make sure it stopped losing weight. Other than that, she doesn't weigh it because she doesn't care. Sometimes she'll weigh it when she's putting it into the bags just so that she kind of has even bags, but she doesn't care what the weight is. So you don't have to weigh them. Yeah, I don't know if I can put any more on there. Boy, I'm going to try to get another little piece in there. So then I'll have to change the weight. So that's 1488. I'm going to call that good enough. Tray two. Fifteen eighty four on that one. Sixteen sixty. This is tiny ham pieces, one cup each baggie. Well, I'm going to see how these will work on there. I hope that'll fit in the freeze dryer. That's really tall and it's really solid. I don't think I can break them, but that's okay. If they'll fit, I'm going to put them in there. I don't know if that's going to fit. Holy moly, that's thick. Okay, I'm going to go check to see if that's too tall. Okay, that's ridiculously tall and it could end up causing a problem with drying time. But once they dry some, then I can kind of push them down. But it did fit, so they're going in. 
And on that end, it's the bag that said tiny ham pieces, about one cup each. This is going to be interesting because those are ridiculously thick. So it's not too much total on the tray. It's the fact that they're so thick. It's only 1696. So it's still less than two and a half pounds on here. It's just ridiculously thick. So I'm going to try to tuck thermometers in each one of these. And these, the ones with just pieces, I can just kind of, I don't know, push it between a couple of the chunks and it's won't be perfect, but it'll still let me know the temperature in that area when I go to uh, start and stop it. Okay, well, it's kind of sandwiched in between pieces. And this one's just absurd. I don't know how to do take care of this one. I guess I could try to... Okay. It breaks up enough. I'll just kind of stick it in there. And now we'll go get these in the freeze dryer and get them started. Those are ready to go in. One of the batches of cleaning off that shelf. Finally, the first set of cleaning off that shelf, or the first batch of cleaning off that shelf. We'll get them in there and we'll be back in. These are a low moisture item, so they could be done tomorrow afternoon or evening. But the one tray is so thick, the pieces, I think it'll probably take till the next day. Um, after they've freeze dried a bit, we can kind of push those down and spread them out and that'll help. So, let's get them on. Okay. Yeah, that's tall. Okay, the thermometers in the food on the trays say somewhere around 10 degrees. The one underneath the trays, um, touching the barrel, shows about negative 30. Uh, so it shouldn't take too long before it's cold enough. In the meantime, I'll make sure that we've got a ring seal all the way around. Because uh, we're missing quite a few spaces right now after opening that. We've got a ring all the way around there. Don't have to worry about air infiltration. So as soon as this one's done, uh, we'll be getting another one right behind it from that same shelf. And I'll try to show as much as seems interesting with those batches. So don't go away. We'll be right back. The little ham bits and pieces and slices have been in here for about 26 and a half hours. And it says that they're within an hour of being done. Uh, the tray temperatures are all 120 or higher but if you remember that one tray the pieces were really big the way they were frozen they have fallen down as the ice has been sublimated out of it so let's get them all out so i'm going to bypass the time early this time get them out and check them because they could be done already ham doesn't have that much water in it cooked ham like this especially overcooked ham like this so they could be done sooner so we're going to bypass the rest of the time uh, get them out weigh them and then put them back in for a couple hours unless we feel any cold or ice spots then we'll probably put them in for three hours or four hours so anyway let's get this bypassed and get them out to check them so it still has more than 50 minutes to go and the pressure is really low it says the temperature is 111. Uh, the heater is on right now, so that's going to climb back up until it's like 120 or so, and then it'll cycle back off. But all the trays show at least 120. So we'll just down arrow past the last of that, and then open the drain valve. And we'll see what we have. So I'm going to, when I put them back in, I'm going to rotate the top two trays and then the bottom two trays. The so tray one, yikes, that sucker's scorching warm. Wow, hot, hot, hot. It says 120, uh, 
Uh, yeah, it just says 120, but I'm surprised because that tray feels a lot hotter than that. Okay, uh, 1060, so 1060 grams. Uh, tray two. 1,079 and then these we'll put these back up in the opposite spots okay so tray two I'm gonna put up on the top shelf and tray one putting in here now tray three okay tray three is 1064 Tray four. This is the one I'm going to kind of push them down. These are the ones I suspect there could be ice in them. Okay, 1143. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take this one. And these are the pieces I was concerned about. Nope, all they all still seem warm all the way to the middle. And these were the ones that were three quarters of a cup. I'm going to go ahead and rotate this tray around. Okay, there's ice right here. <laughs> so in the middle of this section, so the ones that were big and round, there is ice in the middle of those. And of course this thermometer would take quite a long, long time to show that, so I'm not going to worry about it. But yeah, there is little bits of ice inside there yep a little bit right here also so these other ones that were a little slightly thinner and it looks like bigger pieces and cooked even more more overcooked and some of these other ones could have probably come out hours ago this section is probably the part driving it so we'll put them in there for a couple more hours we'll get these back in there and then give it more time. So tray four. Whoops. Lost a piece off there. Tray four will come up here. And tray three will come down. Now, going to give it, uh, going to restart it and give it more time for a dry check. Uh, chances are that three of those four trays won't have any loss and we can take those out in a couple hours. The other tray is going to probably take longer because there were still some little ice bits in there and that's going to take a little longer. Um, well, we know that that one is going to lose weight so we know it's not going to be ready in two hours. But I'll still plan on two hours for the other ones because the other three trays could be ready to bag by then and then those could be taken care of ahead of time. So we'll give it more time and then get it started. More dry time and I just did but it's a good thing it reminds me or I forget sometimes and then continue and it's cool enough because the fan. So don't go away we'll be right back and I'm back. It's been two hours. Uh, it's time to get them out and check them and see if they changed. We know that tray four is going to have changed because we found ice spots in it, which obviously means there was water, frozen water, and so they're going to get lighter. So all of tray four will not be ready. Uh, tray one, two, and three might be ready, and really two-thirds of tray four could be ready, if we feel confident about separating them and using part of it. So I do, I will have to get tray four back in there. Uh, we may take the contents of that and spread it out on a couple of trays and, and so we can get it thinner on the tray because that was just ridiculously thick. But it still works after a while and it hasn't been that long. So anyway, let's get them out of there and check them. So I'm going to bypass the last bit of that and then open the drain valve. And see if it changed at all. 
So starting with tray one. Yikes, that's hot again. Okay, now let's see if there's any change. 1060, no change. That's what I thought would happen with the first three trays. So that one is definitely ready to bag. Tray two. 1079, no change. And I'll glance underneath to make sure it's not touching that. And it's not. 1063. So that might be a gram because it was kind of bouncing. But now, tray four, I would be, well, it has to have lost weight because there was still ice in it. Uh, 1133, uh, 32, so that's 11 more grams. Or it's bouncing between 32 and 33, so it's somewhere between 10 and 11 grams. So that one has to go back in there, but it's all in this. This part is kind of the same as the others. Uh, but I do see that it's a little different configuration. So I think we'll take, we'll get these bagged and then take this and spread it out onto two trays so that we can get it uh, a couple more hours real quick. Okay, but in the meantime, I'll put it in the freeze dryer to wait. So I'm just gonna set it in here and we'll get the other stuff bagged real quick. Well, this just waits for us. Now, also, that means these were dry uh, two hours ago. So I can take the timer up there and for two hours for these. So that's 26 and a half hours for those for the dry time. And so I'll kind of track the other one as a separate one. But anyway, so 26 and a half hours if the ham is in little pieces like this and, and spread out as opposed to ridiculously tall and lumped together. So we'll get these moved over and get them bagged. So I've got these first three trays weighed and I've got the part uh, that was on here onto here because this was part of the same. So I've got them separated now and I've got them weighed. I've recorded those first, these first three trays. Of course, I'll have to wait for tray four. But for our purposes of bagging these, it doesn't matter because she doesn't care about the exact weights before and after. And especially with things like ham or vegetables because they pretty much absorb the water they need. So if this was in a bag, you could just pour, or a bowl, you could pour the water over it, wait a couple of minutes and just simply drain it out and it's fine. Same with vegetables. Uh, vegetables, a lot of those tend to take a lot longer than ham slices. So weight isn't really important on these. It's more how many does she want in the bag? So for instance, uh, you saw maybe on one of our older videos with for my stuff, we kind of put it together as, okay, there's one sandwich worth and I want two of those in a bag. And so we kind of looked at it like that and went two sandwiches or four sandwiches per bag by kind of laying it out in a shape to figure out how many was in there. You can also go, well, these are little pieces. I'll probably use these and kind of shred them up and for a ham spread, or I'll put them in ham and bean soup. So then more weight or volume might be important. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. People sometimes overthink the bagging. Bag them the way that you think you're going to use them. And remember, it might change. When we first started, we were bagging everything in giant bags. Our our two favorite bags now are the pint bag and a quart bag. When we started, this was the bag that we used the most. So there's the, by size comparison, there's the pint and the quart. Uh, these are a huge bag. But then when we went to use them, we found out that we would much prefer to have a smaller portion bag to use them because uh, we would so often have three quarters of the bag left. And that might be great if you know you're going to use it for a group or a large family. Uh, but for us, if we want to take it out camping or, or car camping, then it's really nice to have a smaller amount. So try to think of how you're going to use it when you're bagging it and 
do it appropriate for what you need. Going to get these labeled and I've pre-printed some labels. It's got a batch number, what it is, the date that it went into the freeze dryer, the approximate uh, amount that it is because this was originally kind of put out in cups but it'll be easy to just cross that through and put a different amount. And then just a little note, to rehydrate, just get it wet, then drain it. So it's pretty simple on these. So we'll get these taped to the bags and the bags will also have the batch number written on it. So in case this label gets lost off the bag, we'll still have that information right on it. So we'll get those, get these taped on and come back and bag them. So now I've got that on there. I'm going to try to fit all of that in a pint bag. And they all go together, so if it won't fit, I'm not going to worry about it too much. I'll just kind of take the... It was just all the littler bits. And it's got a pretty good volume, so we could try it out. And I could take a couple of the bigger pieces and just kind of set them over here. And then fill up that space out of the bag. And then if there's more room, take some of these back and put them in there. Because they, they easily could fit. Oh yeah, once you see it on the scoop, yeah, there's plenty of room. So I'm going to take those little pieces I moved and put them back in there. Kind of look for any of the other small bits. They probably broke some of them up a little bit when I was transferring them on here because they were so frozen. We'll call that one bag and won't really worry about the volume. I mean, because you can kind of see it and feel it when you go to use it, and that should work out pretty well. So we'll get this tray emptied first, because then we'll use this tray to spread the other tray, tray four, onto the two, uh, so we can make sure that it finishes drying quickly. What do you want those on? Like they're yours. You want to just go with pints? I think so. Because none of these are too big. No, I think it'd be fine. So the rest of this tray, I'm just going to put a pints worth in there or what will fit in a pint bag because they're only a pint if you're if it's water or liquid otherwise it never really fills in that every little corner with other things so I'll get enough so that it'll still close comfortably without crushing the little ham bits even more and I'm gonna just go ahead and just pick up the pieces and toss them in there Give them just a, a gentle shake to kind of Tetris them in there. So I'm not going to bother washing this tray right now. Usually we wash them between batches unless they're identical batches and the next one's already ready. Then we put it all in the freezer waiting. But I'm going to go over and put the other part of ham on here. Or actually, I could bring it over here. I'll do that. So I've mentioned quite a few times about the thermometers in here and about the point of it is so I can check the temperature of the food before I take it out to make sure uh, it doesn't need rewarmed if the machine is already stopped. Well, it says it's only about 60 degrees in the middle of that food and I took it out, but the tray is cold and there's condensation on the tray. So if it were any colder, well, even at this temperature, I wouldn't take it out because there's condensation on the tray. That means right here where the food is touching, it's now damp. Uh, that would be disastrous if you were going to be bagging it. Now, I know that right here from here over was one uh, batch and then this was the other one. So I'm going to move this portion onto here so I'll move this portion onto the other tray uh, to separate them. And there's every likelihood that these are already dry, but we can't tell uh, because the tray, way, tray weight went down 10 or 11 grams and we can't guarantee it was all out of this portion of it. It probably was. It's probably fine on this portion. But I don't know about you, well, I'm not going to chance it. 
uh, small ham pieces. I think that was this. Anyway, so I'm going to spread these out. And I suspect all of this is quite dry. But this is the side that had uh, moisture on it, or ice. So I'll reweigh these. When I get done, I need to put them all back on one and on number four so I can get my final weight for the fourth tray. But in the meantime, I'll weigh them so I'll know how they fare. Because I wouldn't be surprised if this one still has some water to lose. This is probably fine. So we'll use a post-it note to track tray three and four now. Okay. And so that one's four and it's 969 and three is 905. And I wouldn't be terribly surprised to see this one drop a little bit more. It'd be great if it didn't because uh, then we could get the next batch started right away. Going to go get these back in the machine and get them started or restarted. Now it's all yours. I'm going to go ahead and turn the audio off. It's been about two and a quarter hours. I'm going to take out the tray, the one tray that we split onto two trays because the one area on one tray had a bit of ice on the first check. When I put it back in and spread it out on the trays, I did not feel any cool spots at all. So it probably is done, but I'm not sure if the weight's going to show that it's done because it may not have been done when we first put it in, but it got done over the two hours. Uh, the only way I know to check for sure is to keep doing it until it loses no weight or so little weight that I'm confident that it did happen during the first part of the drying. So that's what we're going to do with this one. If it only loses maybe a gram or two, then we'll assume that happened during that first part of the two and a quarter hours. So let's get them out, check them, see what they look like. So arrow past the last of that again. Now open the drain valve. Now we've got the weights on a little post-it note for these two. So 903, 904. So it's showing 904, so that's only one gram. So two and a quarter hours and it's showing a single gram and this was the portion of it that I was concerned about. That's good. So I think we're going to be done. and nine six eight so it's the same thing one gram for all of that so we're good now with this time because the ham has such a little amount of water for that amount of ham uh, we're not going to defrost it because we have another batch of cooked chicken that also has very little water in it so I'm just going to go ahead and put it in there tonight. As soon as we get these bagged and off those trays, the other ones will start getting loaded and we'll get them in there right away. And I'll show you what we'll do with the timer. We'll just stop it and restart it immediately. In the meantime, we'll get the trays moved over and then we'll get the time that it took and the power usage. So we'll be right back on those. On that part of the batch, since they still lost a gram on each, I'm going to go ahead and use this time uh, for how long that portion of it took. So if you've got them real thick on the tray, they take longer. There was actually less on that tray, but it took uh, about five hours longer than the other ones. It was just so thick, it took a long time. Don't pile them so thick. So I'm going to have 31 and a half hours for the second part. The power usage on that batch of ham was 20.41 kilowatt hours. And now we'll get it reset and ready for the next batch. 
And right now, the cooling unit on the freeze dryer and the electronics of the freeze dryer total are using just under 330 watts or about 330 watts. And for this final weight of good enough. Now we can get the weight on that one. Okay, 1122. So these are the last five bags of the uh, little ham pieces. All of them were put in pint bags. We're going to add the 300 cc oxygen absorbers to these. And with pint bags, you could definitely add a smaller one. And when we buy them as sets, I think they come with 100 cc. But this is what we keep on hand for all of our pint and quart bags. That way we only have to have one and we're less likely to get the wrong one if we only have one. And you can certainly use a, a vacuum type uh, sealer on these. The chamber ones sound like they work pretty well. I don't have one, so I don't use one. And of course the ultimate would be a nitrogen flush and then an oxygen absorber and a, a seal or a vacuum seal. I don't have all that either. Okay, then I'm going to seal the bags at the top edge as high as I can, but still getting the full seal. And I'm going to go twice on the first one to make sure it's all the way up to temperature. All right, got a good seal high up on there with room for two or three more tries in case I have screwed that one up. Or in case I want to cut it off, use part of it and reseal it. So get those and then they can be sent away for storage because these don't get to be put in bins down here. Most of these would belong in the J bin. You can tell because there's a J on the bag, uh, but J bin is really, really full because the J bin had 121 little bags in it. Most of them were little bags, a lot of pint bags, because this makes sense for a lot of people because that's still, I mean, if you were using this in uh, for instance, eggs and ham or uh, soup or something. That's a lot of ham for one or two people uh, to be mixing it with something else. All right, those are done. The last thing that we like to do before we store any of them for long term is to write the gross weight of the entire bag and contents on the bag. So if uh, any appreciable amount of moisture starts going through the bag, it'll get heavier and we can tell by weighing it. So this bag is 98 grams now. So we'll get these labeled, then they will be able to go in the bags and go bye-bye. And moisture will go through the bag. Oxygen will go through the bag. All of the plastic bags are permeable to some extent to oxygen and moisture. It's just the um, how much. The bigger the bag, so the, the, they're rated kind of on uh, the amount of transmission per area over time. So the smaller bag, smaller surface area, less oxygen and moisture is going to go through it over the same given time of a, of a bigger bag, of course, because it has more surface area. Anyway, Stuff is going to go through the bag. It's just a matter of how fast. Hopefully we'll be long dead before it matters. Yeehaw! And then all of these will just get put into a bag and whisked away.